Hi viewers, this is Dr. Manu Sharma, representing Lovely Professional University in Department of History. Today we are going to discuss here about the historical interpretation through folk tradition. So before beginning this slide, let me uh, discuss with you about what folk tradition is. Folk tradition is the common belief, it is a practice, it is the custom, these are the cultural roots or cultural perspective which has evolved through the previous generation to the contemporary society. If we have to decide about the folk, what is folk? What do you understand from the folk? What is a folk tradition? Folk, generally we call folk the group of people and these group of people can belong to a specific ethnicity, to a tribal group or the people who are associated with some regional association, with some regional belief, which is representing religion, society, culture. In a nutshell, I would say it is the synthesis. This is the assimilation of all these things. And when it is touched with the cultural elements, when it is touched uh, with the uh, tangible and intangible culture, it can be a song, it can be the tradition, it can be art and craft, it can be music, it can be dance, it can be a cultural practice, it can be a festival. So many things are associated in it. So this is how we define the folk tradition. Next, it is the historical interpretation of folk culture. What is a folk culture? As you know, India is a vast vivid land of vivid cultural beliefs, of vivid regional beliefs. Definitely India is divided, India is uh, contributed, India is classified into various regional units and each region represents a unique culture, a unique folk tradition. To give the certain example, if I would say the northeastern part of uh, India, it is the seven sisters, the group of seven sisters, which is the center, which is the, uh, you can say the blend of all the cultural folk practices and tradition, which represent their own region specifically. And if I'll talk about the northern part of India, the northwest part, it is with Jammu Kashmir, it is with Punjab, it is Himachal, it is Haryana, and every region is having its own distinct culture, having its distinct masterpiece of their practices, which is representing through various colors, through various modes, through various manifestation, be it the cuisines, be it the dance, be it the song, be it the festivals or you can say the different days which are celebrated and Deccan, the South India, which is the, uh, the rainbow of all the uh, cultural, social practices and truly if I would say um, India is a blend of all the cultural synthesis of the tradition, the folk, the music, the festivals and everything. How we are defining it? How history is defining these cultural folk culture? It is the regional variation which is going to play a very important role. If somebody is from South India needs to define culture or the folk culture, he is going to define it from its own historical perspective. A South Indian tradition values can be well uh, defined, can be well interpreted through its temple architecture through the practices, through the festivals which is being celebrated over there. Or if I would say the northern Indian hemisphere or if it is the, or if it is the northern India, there are the festivals which is related to the harvesting festival, the festivals which are celebrated on certain auspicious days. And the practices, the folklore which is closely associated with these culture has its own historical roots. Similarly, the part is with the western as well as the eastern India and the central part of India is also going to represent the various interpretation of the historical facts. Now, uh, as we are moving in the 21st century and uh, the entire world is globalized and we have just 
uh, gone through various kind of social, economic, political, psychological changes through the pandemic period. And what is the role of culture during this age? How culture is taken? How culture is defined? And when we go through the past to take the glimpse of those culture which is assimilated in the historical roots of India, it is really uh, very uh, much, uh, I would say, it is really very much uh, surprisingly to say that uh, various uh, folk culture, whether it is in the tangible form or whether it is in the intangible form, it is on the verge of extinction. Why it is extincting? If we are going to root out the cultural values, the synthesis of those culture which is assimilated in the roots of Indian history, if it will be extincting, definitely it will be a great loss to the country. And what are the major reasons for that? Extincting folk culture represent that we are forgetting our cultural heritage and various factors contributed to it. Few of them, for example, the industrialization, as I told you in, in the beginning, it is whether it is the westernization, whether it is modernization, whether it is industrialization, because now we are entering or we have entered into a world of consumerism where everybody is consuming the goods, where historical things are not taken as the cultural property of it. Everybody is trying to make money out of it and nobody is caring about the values about the ethics, about the ethnicity of it. So it is the industrialization where machine-made tools, where the machine-made products are being selling into the market. And this is going to transform the world into a new thing, which somebody says that these are the westernization, some says it is the modernization. But this westernized world has going, is going to cost us in a big way because it is getting us away, it is making us to forget our cultural heritage. Then it comes the uh, decreasing demands of those goods because in the world which is full of digitization, in a world which is full of mechanism, nobody has time to stop and look towards those glimpses which, uh, which is going to enrich one's culture, which is going to enrich the culture of some religion, of some region. So there is no demand of it. The demand is decreasing day by day. Nobody has a time to preserve those cultural things. And second things which is, uh, and the second factor which contribute is the digital society. Nowadays we spend much more time on the digital networking platform or the social platform, internet, Facebook, Instagram, share chat. And in this digitalized society, those forms of those forms of heritage those forms of culture those forms of folk values those forms of folk tradition it is on the verge of extinction then skill development there is a lack of orientation for the skill development nowadays the government is putting efforts for this also but still there is a long way to go support and market these are the two things which we do not have. There's a lack of support, there's a lack of markets. Though support is from the, I would say, uh, from the state governments or the, um, or, or from the state government or from the central government. Why it is so? Because the state government and central governments are busy or they are more uh, inclined for some big projects. But nobody is putting as much as efforts which is required to preserve the folk tradition or to preserve the folk culture. And if I would talk about the markets, definitely there is uh, a lot of hue and cry about the uh, market where the handicraft products are being sold. But still, if we look the market on the other side, which is available for the other goods, it is the digital market, it is the uh, mall culture, which is available everywhere nowadays. And when we compare it, with the local market, which is not full of those goods, which is going to represent the folk culture. There are only handful of centers like Khadi Bandar or the local art galleries where we can find such things. So the availability of these goods, so availability of these things, which is representing our folk culture 
it is not available. So these are few uh, weaknesses which is not available or uh, I would say these are the few weaknesses which are responsible for the extinction of the folk heritage. These are the few examples I would say. Uh, for example, there was once a time during our childhood we are supposed to see the puppetry. The art of puppetry is now extinct. There a, I don't believe that uh, there are many people those who are into this profession. So this is also one thing which is going to uh, extinct nowadays. Then the snake charmers earlier there was uh, common uh, people those um, uh, earlier there was the time when we normally see the snake charmers in or around our locality but nowadays uh, these people or this uh, things or these culture is going to uh, be extinct and they are on the verge of extinction. Then these are the jugglers, those who are supposed to entertain the other people in the market places, in the village places, in the fairs and festivals. But as we can see now, that kind of culture is also on the verge of extinction. Then it is the uh, rock art which is uh, uh, taken forwarded from the Paleolithic age when the early men in Indian history is supposed to draw such types of drawings on the caves. This is also on the verge of extinction. Another thing is the Patachitra. Patachitra, you can see here in this image, it is representing the lords of Jagannath. Lord Jagannath, Subhadra and Balabhadra. So this Patachitra is a tradition of painting which is also on the verge of extinction due to the lack of support, due to the lack of orientation, due to the lack of skilled people. So this is the uh, few of the example I have given here and the miniature paintings which was once uh, the uh, very much uh, in vogue during the Mughal period. This is very much sought after, this is very much uh, taken uh, into the uh, artistry by the artists during the Mughal age. But nowadays, if I would say, a very few uh, painters are there, who those who are involved in the miniature paintings. So these are the cultural roots of India. Through the various region, it is represented. So the need is to reserve it, to preserve it, to conserve it for our upcoming generation.